Okay, welcome back. This is Tim, G.I. Joe Immortal, and today we are going to look at the Classified Series. Finally get a look at the Classified Series Snake Eyes. First, a little bit of history. When G.I. Joe started out, he started out with the, this is the original figures here. The 12-inch line, uh, they considered it an action soldier right and it came with all the equipment the deal was is you got a figure with a uniform and then you had to buy accessory packs like uh, a backpack or entrenching tools canteens helmets things like that and then later on once star wars got into the mix they came up with these in 1982 Although this is an eight uh, later one, it's like 84, 85. Anyways, this was the size they went to. And of course they had to make enemy figures, which gave them a chance to make uh, several vehicles and just exploded on the scene with all kinds of uh, accessory packs and vehicle sets and play sets. And it was a great time to be a kid and a collector at the time. Um, they discontinued this line after, let's see here, the Adventure Team, which uh, ended up in America, ceasing to exist in 1977. These came out in 1970, and it was more an Adventure Team, where a guy was either a hunter or a, a skier or a mountain climber or something like that, as opposed to a military figure. They were trying to shy away from the military. Well, then in the 90s, they came back to it and said, hey, let's make some Hall of Fame figures. And they came up with these guys, still 12 inch, um, but more in the likeness of the cartoon characters or the comic book characters. And now, well, since then, these are some of the vehicles. This is this is the Wolverine. It's got a breaker in it. But, uh, you know, you could make several of different kinds of vehicles for the enemy and everything else which was excellent for the line. Um, it made millions, I'd have to say billions of dollars for Hasbro. Now we get into the age now where they go with these, they call them eight inch figures, but they're more like seven inch figures. This is Duke. I've, uh, they have a different look to them, more of a modern look. Um, I'm not, I like, I like the head sculpt I, and I really like the, uh, articulation because they can, uh, you can pose, they're very poseable and, uh, not real crazy about the weapons. They look, I don't know, it's supposed to be a laser gun, I guess, but it looks like, uh, they're trying to imitate an M4 modified, but you know, it's. It's not a real world weapon, let's put it that way. But uh, I, I really do like what they went for here, since they're not really putting out too much of the uh, smaller figures, like the three and three quarter figures. They're coming out with the classified series, which there's Gung Ho, and I happen to find a Cobra Commander also. We're going to review those later. But now they also went as far as to go super small with the world's smallest G.I. Joe. There's Snake Eyes in his original 1982 version outfit. But so small, I mean, what are you going to do? And then they come up with these nano rides, which I thought were really cool. The G.I. Joe Snowcat Vamp, although they, you know, they're just micro machines. Um, no vehicles for any of these um, other than this vehicle set. Of course, their figures are way too small to be uh, coinciding with these vehicles, obviously. So, which leads us to this that I waited months and months and months for to get. I uh, pre-ordered it. I was real unsure if I was going to, to begin with. I'm going to go ahead and open this while I'm talking about it. But this is the Classified Series, and the outer box just says G.I. Joe Classified Series on it. It has a nice wolf design on it, 
on the front plus you can see a sword down here really subdued so you have to really look at it you know, same on the back plus all the credits and things like that and uh, that's the outer cover I have not opened this figure yet I was waiting to do this and this is the front as you see it has some uh, writing over here I have no idea what that means but it has the same picture of this wolf and this kind of looks like a, another face down here but a wolf and a face together and uh, a pretty cool design it gives it a mystique kind of and then the box opens like you would a clothing box all right so let's go ahead and pop this open oh and we have the artwork now so you have artwork so maybe some frameable art if you wish um and get it out without hurting it okay and there is the artwork which in the light is what you're looking at on the outer box both boxes um, I think they could have used different designs, but it's still a pretty cool drawing. Uh, this is obviously a pencil art here, and fine artist, very good, very good. And we look at the inside of the box. As you can see, here is the classified figure in the box. We'll be breaking him out here, and it looks like we have a weapon stand. So let's go ahead and pull the box out. And it's all packed in foam. It looks good. Let me uh, get a knife and trip the tape here. This is considered number zero. I know some of the other boxes have different, like Cobra Commander is number six. I guess that's a number of the figures, how they come out, the order. Now this one you had to pretty much buy, you either have to find it online or you had to pre-order it from Hasbro Direct, Pulse I guess you would call it. So I'm going to go ahead and get the snake eyes out. I don't think he's strapped in anyway, I think he's just kind of sunk in there. That's good, okay. We have the figure out, and the figure looks to be the torso is really kind of loose, as I notice right off the bat. A really nice sculpt, though. Uh, I like the head design with the visor. It has the uh, kind of the vintage style, all black. Okay, and we've got a belt going across with grenades on it. They're not removable. We have a little pack on the shoulder here. And one also on the other side. We have two belts. One with, uh, let me get his arms up out of the way. We have two belts here. Two types of buckles on the front. And we'll spin it around so you can take a look at the design of the belt. Just a, looks like a basic web belt. Um, they, it is all one, but it's two belts, but they do have them kind of together right here. They're melded together. There's a knife scabbard here. And you got a pistol and another probably for a silencer or possibly something else. But uh, the head sculpt is cool with the visor. You know, he doesn't speak, so... Now, he does also have another chest protector deal here. He's got two holes in the back, one on the belt, so you could probably line those up and fit them all in. Uh, really loose uh, as far as... Yeah, I don't really... I don't care for that, how loose that is. But I guess that's the way it is. I've, I've heard others have the same thing. Let's see how he bends. He bends pretty good. He's got a lot of articulation, which is good. 
the wrists move around no hinges there uh, yes it does have hinges on the feet let's see how well we can bend the knees pretty good they're really tight okay let's uh but that's the snake eyes figure itself it's got the black boots that kind of look like he's wearing slippers but uh, I guess they're supposed to be boots but they do have articulation on the feet he does have knee pads and he has another belt underneath there so there's he's got a lot of belts he's wearing gloves bracers and that is pretty much the figure and let's take a look at some of his weapons now it does have removable hands so you can move the hands you have like a karate chop hand here and you have a, like a fist hand here there's a knife there's a big long scabbard for this katana here he's got his classic Uzi he's got a pistol and a silencer which I imagine goes on that with a backpack and uh, that's the extent of the weapons right there I'm gonna pull them out we'll get a closer look at them here in a second but let's go ahead and look at the weapons rack which has the that's like kind of a, a Rashikage type design on it Japanese oriental design on there that is really cool looking I imagine they gave it kind of like an ivory look to it has two wolves on the side I think that's really sharp that is very cool and then you flip it around and that's where you have all your weapons I think that's a really nice added feature this was made in 2019 That's really nice. I like I like the weapons rack. Now he's got a whole bunch more weapons here. We're going to go ahead and pull them out. He has a double-ended spear right here. Got blades on both ends. I forget what the oriental name is for it. And then we have two throwing axes. Two throwing axes looks like you can hook those to somewhere they hook on the rack for sure but I wonder if you can hook them on to his his uh, gear or his belt or anything but uh, he's got two of those two throwing axes and here's a regular katana and there's a Japanese sword here Let's see if I can get it to focus on it as you can see right here so that's the katana and then we have two sight scythe looking type of weapons uh, I don't know what they're called if you guys know let me know but uh, it has two of those And then, even more, looks like we have another katana. This one has more of a curve to it. The plastic is, is actually pretty decent. Um, it's not really brittle, and it's not too rubbery. It's got some good stiffness to it. And now we have two, two sides. These are called size. And we have two of those, which is a favorite weapon of the Oriental fighter fighting style there. And that's all the weapons. So um, my overall looking at the figure, I, I really like it. I think it's cool. I think it was uh, designed really well. I wish the torso wasn't so loose. But I think that's just, uh, I don't think that's really their fault. 
Um, but I really like the design of the figure. He's definitely, I mean, one look at it, you know it's Snake Eyes. And they definitely captured the essence of the original figure, for sure. And uh, I think the overall design of it is great. And the extra weapons is just a bonus. I, I think it's great. Uh, with the weapons rack and all the different poses that you could put him in with the weapons. Um, I think it's a it was a really cool, really well done. Um, I know I was kind of on the fence about the classified series coming out. I wasn't really happy with the way the uniforms looked, like on Duke and Gung Ho. But I'm kind of warming up to it. Um, it is kind of different because, you know, I, I wish they would have just put out some more smaller figures um again and made you know some new figures new vehicles uh, a new line new stories but they're really just not wanting to do that and it's kind of confounding in a way because you could do so much with this line and uh, they just choose not to go the military route with it as far as storing this i mean you could just store it right in the uh, box it came in it's a great display um, but they have no problem putting all the weapons back in and uh, I think they did a really nice job I mean you just put the weapons right back in where they went or you can store them on the rack and I believe they'll fit on the rack I wonder how this would go it would just sit on the rack along the top there's plenty of hooks for all the weapons for sure and a really nice oriental design there but uh, what do you think about the the new line of GI Joe figures that came out I know they're really hard to find um, I just basically found these other figures luckily just at a drugstore I, I went in to pick up a prescription and there was a uh, Cobra Commander and I grabbed it so but uh, as far as finding any at Walmart or anything they're you're just not going to find them they just don't have them they're either they're not putting them out or I mean the figures are really hard to find and that's a shame because I know a lot of a lot of collectors that would like to have them for sure but uh well, we went all the way from 1964 from this and then from that we went to this and then back to this. Which I, I this is still one of my favorite figures. I, I liked rock and roll. I wish they would have did more with rock and roll. I know this is about snake eyes, but and we arrived to this. But uh, great iconic figure, snake eyes. Um, kind of looking forward to the the new movies, the snake eyes movie that's supposed to be coming out, but I have no idea when. And I hope they do the right thing as far as casting and uh, treating Snake Eyes like the original, what he is. I hope they don't change anything about the mystique of Snake Eyes, or they will ruin it and disappoint a lot of fans. But uh, this Snake Eyes right here is iconic to me, and I'm glad I got it. Um, the Classified series, is I'm warming up to it. I'm not real keen on some of the uniforms. I do like this one. He's got more of the gray pants on, but it's still dark and uh, shows a lot of stealth. But uh, I'll do another, uh, once I get all these uh, reviews done, I'll do another one where we can take a closer look. I'll get them geared up. We'll do some posing and uh, and I'll let you know how I feel about how all the weapons fit together 
and uh, how they look. But uh, that's Snake Eyes from the Classified Edition. And uh, this was a tough, tough find, but I'm glad I pre-ordered it. Um, direct from Hasbro Pulse, which I was kind of totally against because they like, they kind of like overcharging people for toys. But uh, I'm glad I got this one. So I definitely like it. That's all I got for you today. This is Tim from G.I. Joe Immortal. And uh, you guys keep on collecting and have a great evening.